Hello, my name is Simon Hippenmeyer and I work here at the newly established IST Austria. It's my great pleasure to introduce to you our newest work published in Cell Reports. This study was carried out together with Lee Chun Luo at Stanford University and Randy Johnson at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. In our work, we made use of MADAM, also known as mosaic analysis with double markers. We used MADAM in order to assess genomic imprinting and epigenetic phenomena at the single cell resolution. But what is genomic imprinting? Usually, all cells get half of the genetic information from the mother and half from the father, as one chromosome comes from the mother and the other one from the father. Most of the genes are expressed from the chromosome of both parents. This is called biallelic expression. However, some genes are specifically expressed only from the chromosome of one parent. This phenomenon is called genomic imprinting. Some imprinted genes are only expressed when they come from the mother. The other copy on the father's chromosome is silenced and not expressed. On the other hand, some genes are only expressed when they are on the father's chromosome and are silenced when they come from the mother. Imprinted genes have essential functions and loss of imprinting has detrimental consequences and can lead to diseases including intellectual disability or cancer. It is currently unclear to what extent genomic imprinting is specific to certain cell types. Are all imprinted genes equally imprinted and in all cell types? And if not, what is the functional consequence of the cell type specific imprinting? We describe here how we use the MADAM method in order to begin to address these open questions. With the use of the MADAM method, we induced uniparental disomy, also known as UPD. In UPD, cells harbor two copies from either only the paternal or only the maternal chromosome. Importantly, with MADAM, the maternal UPD can be labeled in one color, here in red, whereas the paternal UPD can be labeled in green. In cells with such UPDs, imprinted genes get homozygous. This has the consequence that, for example, in the red cell, maternally expressed genes are overexpressed by a factor of two, and paternally expressed genes are not expressed at all. In contrast, in the green paternal UPD, the paternally expressed genes are overexpressed and maternally expressed genes are not expressed. By using this experimental paradigm, we can now visualize the consequences of genomic imprinting at the whole chromosome level and at single cell resolution. We first induced UPD for chromosome 7, here shown in the upper panel, and for chromosome 12 in the lower panel. Cells with paternal UPD are labeled in green and cells with maternal UPD are labeled in red in both cases. When we compared these UPD in different tissues, we noticed dramatic differences in the ratio of green to red cells, especially for chromosome 7. In the liver and lung for chromosome 7 UPD, the cells with two paternal chromosomes were much more abundant than cells with two maternal chromosomes indicating a growth advantage of paternal UPD cells. There was, however, no difference in the ratio of red and green cells in the heart or in the brain for chromosome 7 UPD. And for cells with chromosome 12 UPD, we also did not notice any difference. Therefore, our assay revealed cell type specificity and chromosome specificity of genomic imprinting on a whole chromosome level. Now the big question was which genes are responsible for the paternal growth advantage that we have observed in the liver and lung in chromosome 7 UPD. By using a candidate gene approach, we found that a single gene on chromosome 7, IGF2, which is a growth factor, accounts for the majority of the paternal growth advantage in chromosome 7 UPD. In our paper, we propose and discuss in detail 
three models that can account for the action of the secreted IGF-2. By using this experimental paradigm, we can now visualize the consequences of genomic imprinting at the single cell level and at high resolution.